what what are we going to talk about tonight? Uh, I think tonight we could talk about um, a couple of things uh, we didn't quite finish yesterday to okay. do with, uh, with the pyramids. I was mentioning that... Um, with the what? The, with the what, Alan? With the pyramids in Egypt. Oh, the pyramids, okay. Yeah. Um, the ancient priests, as I said before, used to take the pharaohs and various other members um, of high officialdom and they would go through the initiation and lie in the sarcophagus in the king's chamber. And what that symbolized was when they arose from that sarcophagus, they were reborn. This is the term they used. Um, Alan, would you say that the priests at that time in ancient Egypt, were they actually more in control than the pharaohs were? They were completely in control. In fact, um, it's just like today. People had would do uh, the, the average person in Egypt would work most of his life uh, and have very little at the end of it but even then he couldn't rest in peace when he was dead because they had them in fear of their mortal soul afterwards and so what they did was they actually drew up uh, legal contracts because the priesthood uh, was also the, the lawyer association and they found uh, many of these uh, these um, documents uh, and in order to get to to heaven, you had to go through different stages of purgatory. And the Catholics copied that right from oh, you, you, Egyptian. Oh, that came from ancient Egypt? Yeah. And there was various levels, that you see, of purgatory. And uh, uh, in order to get through purgatory, either your relatives who, who remained alive had to keep giving money to the priesthood, or else, or both, in fact, you left most of your estate to the priesthood. And at the very end of the of Egypt, the, the Egyptian priesthood owned almost 90% of, of, of all the land there. And what they would do in return for this land was promise to, on these, uh, these, these documents of clay to pr do so many prayers for you per day, for your soul. Uh, and eventually you would eventually get to, to uh, the land of the kings uh, or the land of the, the, the dead, as they called it. Um, but only through their prayers, you see. Well, you know, this really is amazing because when I had Stephen Ames Jr. on with us one day, yeah. he was reading from a document from the Roman Catholic Church, yeah. and it was one of those kinds of contracts you're talking about from ancient Egypt, and that people had to will their property to the church yeah. when they died, and if they didn't, they were threatened with hell. That's right. That they would burn forever in that fire. Yeah. Yeah. And the ancient Egyptians also had another ceremony at, uh, in the early days of Egypt where uh, the deceased was carried to the banks of the Nile and uh, the high priesthood uh, formed a half circle around the coffin and they did the judging of the dead. And uh, those people in the congregation who had any money due to them uh, by the deceased or anything against the deceased were asked to speak up against the deceased, you see. And then the, the, high, the high priest uh, would then make his decision as to whether the body would, would get ferried across the water by the silent ferryman. And uh, usually nobody spoke up because if the judge proved you wrong in, in your accusation, then you had to forfeit your life as well. But uh, that's what happened before you could actually even get the person uh, into a tomb. Get to go through a trial, and the and the, the, the living judged the dead. Later the living they, judged the dead. Yeah, and later they changed that into a symbolic gesture when they developed more levels of high priesthoods, and uh, they said that, that the highest or the most spiritual person uh, metaphorically traveled across the sky with Horus in his bark, as they called it, which was a ship. Uh, through the prayers of the priesthood and that's when they started the idea that they could literally soak you and your relatives forever and ever you see, before you could uh, join Horus in the bark and um, just for our listeners who may not have heard this before the word horizon comes yeah, from comes Horus, Horus rising right? Yeah, that's right, yeah Horus rising and the date of um, December and of course you also get the word setting from set or seti 
said was Horus is your brother. Uh-huh. Yeah. And he brought on the darkness. 